Okay, so this is the second video of the cooling of a disc. So we did the geometry in the first video. What we are now going to do is the mesh. And so I'm just going to double click on the mesh to open the mesh module. And this will now open the geometry we generated. It's automatically linked within Workbench. And if you remember the geometry, we had a disc surrounded by a block a rectangle of fluid. So that was the fluid and the solid bit in the middle was the disc. So we are going to do a conjugate heat transfer problem and that means we are going to mesh and model the actual disc. We're not just going to represent the disc as a boundary condition to the fluid, we're actually going to model the disc as a solid and we're going to set some heat generation within that solid and where that heat goes and how it goes into the fluid is automatically done by fluid. We're not going to define the heat transfer coefficient. It's just going to work it out, the equations. So we still have our name sections. I'm not going to worry about them too much now. What we're going to do is mesh this. Now the meshing is one of the most important parts of any computational problem. So we're going to do a first pass mesh on this. I'd probably go back and refine it after I've been through the whole process once or twice. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to zoom in, we're going to mesh the, I'm going to put a boundary layer on the, um, on the disc surface. So I'm going to get rid of the solid, I'm going to hide the solid body. So now it's easier just to see what we are doing. So I'm going to go to mesh, under mesh controls, I'm going to add an inflation layer. And the geometry, there's two bits, the scope and the definition. The scope is a bit of the model within which the boundary layer is going to appear. So that's going to be our fluid. So I'm just going to click on the fluid. Go over here, hit apply. So the boundary layer is going to be in the fluid. If we clicked on the solid, it might be in the solid. We don't want that. We want the boundary layer to be in the fluid. Down in definitions, we want this to define the surface from which the boundary layer will come. So what we're going to do, so we're doing face and click that face. And by zooming in, we're going to click the edge as well. So control, left click, and then apply. So that the red is the surface and the blue is the volume. So I'm going to make, go down here. So we transition, that's fine. I think now we're going to do um, first layer thickness. Please define, I'm going to make that a millimeter. One exponential minus three. Very good. Um, five, I maybe increase that to seven layers. And that's it. So if we now click generate mesh, it is now generating the mesh, and there you go. Click back on mesh gets us a mesh. It's a little bit hard to see, so what I am going to do is just um, zoom out. Come on. And if you click up here, new section plane, it's already open. It allows you to cut across there. I'm not going to worry too much about where it is. And therefore, we can see what we're doing. Just do that right. Click there, and then zoom in. Come on, click, click. So as you can see, there is our boundary layer mesh. So these horizontal bits are the boundary layer, and this is the main fluid. Problem is, if we zoom in a bit more, we've got some very long and thin elements. We have flow going over this, we're trying to capture the boundary layer. So we don't want this aspect ratio on this, I think is maybe not good enough. So to get a better aspect ratio, I'm going to mesh the two surfaces of the disc and force the size of these surface elements to be smaller. So back on mesh, mesh controls, we're going to add a sizing. So geometry selection is going to be on the face. 
So that face there and that edge there, control click and apply. Click on wireframe there. There we go. So what we want to do is set some controls. So element size, we're going to have four millimeters, four e to the minus three. I'm going to make it hard, which means I want it to be four millimeters. And that's it. So hit generate mesh and it generates the mesh. It's going to take longer because there's more mesh. And there we go. So mesh, let's go on solid body. So now rotate. You can see much finer mesh on the surface and like you zoomed in that time. See, the shape of the elements is much nicer, not quite as long and thin. And over here to rotate. Again, nicer shaped elements. We zoom out. That way. Go out. You can see we've got, we've got quite a rough mesh elsewhere. I'm going to leave that just because I want to move on. But in reality, I would go back and I think I would make that finer because we're going to have a wake coming. Actually, the way is it? We're going to have a wake behind this disc. So they need to capture a wake over here. And we're probably not capturing it very well. But it might be all right. We'll see. So the next thing to do is to mesh the solid. So we are going to hide the fluid and show the solid. There we go. So we want to mesh it, and I'm going to mesh it with a similar size to the fluid. So it's quite a good match between the solid and the fluid. Fluent probably doesn't need that. It can probably handle meshes at different densities, but I'm going to match them. So what I want to do is mesh the faces with the size of three millimeters, just like I did with the fluid. So I need to find out which one is the in inside face and which is the asymmetry uh, face. So if we go down here and go to symmetry disk, so top face, or bottom face, that is the symmetry. So I need to mesh the gray ones. So I'm going to go to mesh, mesh controls, sizing, choose the faces. That face and that edge, control click on this note, there you go, and then apply over here. So I now have the purple faces. I'm going to mesh them faces. I'm going to mesh them the same size as I did for the fluid faces. So element size 4, 3B minus 3 to 3 millimeters. Again, I'm going to make it hard just so it conforms to what I want better. Then click Generate Mesh. So click on Mesh, and there you go, the mesh. Let's now make the fluid visible, show our bodies. Click on Mesh again. I'm going to click on my section plane so I can look at the mesh. And there we have our mesh. Not perfect match, but it's quite good. We've also got two through the thickness of the disc, which I think I probably want because that we're going to have constant heat generation within the disc, so that may be parabolic. It's probably flat because of the conductivity so high. But I wanted more, maybe more than one through the thickness. 